most good people, air quotes, are hiding behind transformation. You never transform because you're a consistent hiding behind the fact you don't need to transform. So you end up being a mean empath because you're tired of being disrespected another moment. So camera zone, camera zone, camera zone, camera zone, camera zone. Now, this is in accordance, Jerome, to if you have on underwear. All right, cameras on if your mama would say you can cut your camera off. If you know, you know how you, you know, as you get older, y'all know before you bring your friends to the house, you got to say, hold on real quick. And you open the door first and you make sure your mama got the robe closed. So if your robe ain't closed, you keep your camera on. You keep your camera on. All right, but this is therapy. Actually, just to be to be honest with you, this is cog mostly cognitive processing therapy, but I'm going to mix a lot of cognitive behavior therapy. And one of the rare occasions, I'm, I'm officially starting. Did, did, did you hear the shift in my voice, Grace? Doctor Doctor Randy Hatcher would say, "Artless transition." And one of the rare moments, I want to come from the Bible for this particular class, but I don't want to use the Bible. I want to use a pericope, that's a $22 word for episode. And I want to use Exodus 14. This is what I want to do. The name of today's message is live in it or die for it. At any time thou can interrupt me at any time and have a conversation. We are going to have mostly a conversation. I do submit to you right now, ma'am, right, right now, ma'am, right now, sir, that today's subject is going to highly upset you. It won't be me, but I am going to challenge either your Josephness or your brotherness. For those of you who do not understand the biblical reference in which, no, we're not going to talk about it. Genesis. Watch yourself. I just got it. Skip 38. Um, but I am going to challenge if you were called for this thing or if you hate you know, somebody called for this thing. Watch it. Rewind, press play. The most important person in the Bible is not Jesus. Woo! Can't say that, Antonio. He's the special revelation. I understand. But if it wasn't for the disciples, we wouldn't know nothing about Jesus. Come on now, see, see that, see that, see that controversial thing I just said? It's not controversial at all. Jesus himself said, you would do greater things than me, Grace. Therefore, proving to all of you that you are more important than the teacher. Is that okay? You are more important than the evangelist. Push it further. You are more important than the word. Uh-oh, I'm getting in trouble again, Otis. However, considering that I didn't mean Lagos in itself, you got the point. You're more important than the, I think I think the the preachers say Rima. You know, I, they, they, they do something like that, Jerome. You understand? We're just talking about the message. We're not talking about the tabernacle to become flesh. We're not talking about that, Grace. Is that okay? Today, we're talking about live in it or die for it. I'm going to split this talk into four sections. Section number one, you should probably write this down. I'm going to try to convince you to embrace change and overcome fear. You're not going to listen. You're not going to listen. It's all right. I'm just, I'm going to, uh, Adriana, I am going to get my opposition up front. So I then have an hour or so to convince you that I may be right. That's what I'm going to do, okay? Number two, I'm gonna tell you transformation or trial. There I go again, Joe. There I go again. Number three, like a good Baptist preacher, I'm gonna tell you realizing your potential. So let me tell you, 
And then the fourth part with my closing thought, I'm going to give you some additional information for integration. Now we teach for real. Can you see them? Can you see these guys? Just freed. Walked away with the enemy's gold. And now complaining. Can you see him? Can you see? For allow me this colloquialism. Four hundred, not four. Four hundred years. They've been asking for salvation. A help. A confidant. Maybe can we not work seven days a week at least? 80 years later, well, after that 400 years, then 80 years later, hit to Moses after being his own time in the wilderness. This guy says, come follow me. And they say, ooh, yay. Can you see him? Can you see that the fact that the people Moses saved are not the people that Moses got to save? You missed it. We're not, this is not a Bible discussion. We're taking a character of people. And I'm doing my best, Tracy, to say, you them people. Can you see it? The generation Moses saved ain't the generation Moses saved. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. Just know I'll just cut across the field. That's what the old preacher in Texas would say. And just know it had to be a new generation. This is why many had to have it. It had to be a second word get told. Joshua says specifically in, in chapter 10, Grace. I mean, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 10. There grew a, there grew a generation. So you know what, Grace? You've been Baptist your whole life. What did it say, Grace? There grew a generation. Who that knew not, not the, there you go. Talk to me, Grace. The Lord. That who knew not the Lord, nor the works he had done. At this point, Dr. Ferris, we tripping. Because if you don't know the works, that's God's fault. You, oh, excuse me. Let me do it. If you don't know the works, that's God's fault. Or if you don't know the Lord, excuse me, that's God's fault. But if you don't know his works, I ain't telling the story. There grew a whole generation where folk didn't say it. Now watch this here. Let me get, I'm get, I'm a, I'm getting now the non-Christian because this is not a Christian talk. Let me get the non-Christians now. These folk left. They break down with what was supposed to kill them. They took gold from what was supposed to kill them. And while they had prosperity in their purses, in their backpacks, and in their hands. They were screaming, put us back in slavery. Rewind, press play. I'm going to get this thing down. I'm going to get it down. I'm going to get a few more people with me, Ken. This is, if you have not, if you don't understand public speaking, this is well in my introduction, and I'm doing a good job. Okay. Now, if you don't like it, I must tell you, it ain't gonna get better than this. So you might as well just get with it. It ain't getting no better than this. Listen, at some point, these folk had gold in their hands, gold in their purses, gold in their pockets, gold everywhere. Some of them already melted it down. They were hustlers like me, made gold teeth out of it and genuinely said, man, put me back in. I, I, Moses, what you doing out here? I know I'm rich now. But take this away from me because I'm not comfortable with unfamiliarity. Pause. I hope you don't think I've been talking about this either very true story or fictional story. Depends on which side of the fence you lay on. I'm talking about you because if you complain one time this year, you ain't willing to die for it. There's my thesis. There's my thesis. 
there's my theme you're not willing to die for. You're going to hear that over and over. You know, so I, Martin Luther King, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day you're going to hear, I have a dream. You ain't willing to die for it over and over. Because these folk saw for a long time. They saw 10 plagues. Uh, pay attention. The plagues were so cold that it happened to the whole known world, or at least Egypt, but not them. You're missing it. Anybody ever had life do something to you to where you said, I don't understand how that worked? That's impossible. Anybody have you ever had some impossible moments? Any, any, y'all not gonna y'all y'all not gonna keep it real with me? Is y'all got you super say? You, you understand? Yeah. These folk had impossible happen to them and they're wealthy. Transition point. And since it's not working out in the package they wanted, in the time that they wanted, they wanted to go back to what God was pulling them from. Watch yourself. Can we I talk? need you. To, I need you to stop talking about me. Um, I need you to stop. <laughs> like for real. I'm so happy we back, but man, <laughs> it should have been some more folk out there got hit a couple of times. Tracy, listen. If you complain one time this year, you out of line. But if we do introspection, which nobody likes, we can one. 100% at least point to a time that things were working out for us and we wanted to complain and we stayed there. Just the other day, not going to say who, I told three people just the other day, this week, smile, chill. And no, 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 I didn't just walk up and say smile. Something happened. You know, so no, you know, that's that's quite rude. You should smile more. No, you should stay out of my business, is what that's what it should be, right? But like okay now. Something happened. Hey, if you smile, you'll get out of it. If you if you be happy, you get out of it. And they decided my ego is far greater than my abundance. Reverend, why is you coming out the gate swing at the this is the first day back? Okay, keep going. You, know, you need I, to say that again. You uh, uh repeat. Yeah, my ego is far greater than my abundance. I because how many of you now you know when we kids we let stuff go, but when we adults, we say stuff like, Well, I can't just change like that. Oh, yeah, I don't want to Jerome, they don't want to play with me. They don't want to play with me. I can't just change like that. Okay, here come a talking point. You're gonna have a group discussion. Y'all ready? Group discussion incoming. Here's the picture. These people were blessed with plagues that did not hurt them and were happy. And this is a philosophical, well, this, is, this is a scientific term. The hedonic treadmill happened and they went back to their regular stabilized version of happy. They went from miracle to whatever, this Tuesday. It's okay. If you get, man, come on, man. I was just saying, somebody ought to say something, Jerome. Talk to me, man. Well, the, 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 the part I just wanted to add, to add to what you're saying is um, you, 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 you left something off. Talk okay? to me. Talk to with, me. With, with all that they've been through mm. before them was the land of milk and honey. And they knew it. They weren't in it, but they knew it. So you left that off. I just, I just want you to add, put that on in there. Yeah, that is very true. I'm trying not to make it a Bible lesson. I'm trying to make it a we act but, just like them lesson. But Mr. Smith, oh. but Miss, but Mr. Smith, right? The land of milk and honey is before some of us. It is, and we acting like it ain't there. It don't Ooh. exist. Ooh. and it's there. Jerome, would you like if I point something out since you went there? Go, go, Mr. Smith. Just a little bit later, just a, now that's a, again, allow me that professional term, little bit. That's one word, L I L B I T. That's one word, okay? Little bit. Just a little bit later, they get to this place, and the leader has to make take a bitter piece of wood 
and put it in bubble gut water. I just and I'm not. I'm really. I'm really. I'm really not. I suggest. I'm really not adding to the text. It literally like the text really says that this is just a pond. And if you know anything about common sense and science, if water ain't moving, bacteria is. I'm not trying to get you to add anything into y'all sacred text. I just want you to critically think about your sacred text. This is just a, a still body of water. There's no mention of no rain. And if something, if you in the, if you anywhere with mosquitoes, you are afraid of still bodies of water. Let me just let me just, if if any of y'all in some way, if you in Texas or Florida, we don't like no still bodies of water. We we get rid of get rid of them tires, get rid of everything. We, we don't want no still bodies of water whatsoever. This water most certainly had bacteria in it. There's no doubt about it. Here's the deal. But it turned sweet. The, the text only says grace. This water became sweet. It did not say purified and bacteria free. Now watch this. Now this is Kenneth. This is so important. But they complain the the context. So there's content, Otis, and then there's context. The context encapsulating this content is they're complaining once again. Therefore, their God tells their leader, go and keep the party going. Go and put some, go and put some little, go put some little wood in there. And they drink a little sweet water. Now I promise you, if you go to this text, the very next verse, the very next verse says, then they came to a place with 12 springs <laughs> and 70 palm trees. I swear to you, it says that. This, there was shade, shelter, moving water. The reason why I can say with confidence, now I'm not trying to, I'm, the, I'm not, I'm not trying to be scholastic here by saying I can say with confidence, but I am using great typology, not, not, not what you call allegory. I'm not trying to make a meaning out of something. I'm just saying that according to Grace and Jerome, that their Bible is infallible without errors. One verse says still water. The other verse says spring water. As far as I'm concerned, it's probably safe to say, juxtaposing the two, critically thinking, that 12 springs and 70 palm trees was a lot better than making God do a miracle out of nothing. Can I push it to you now? If we can just stop making God put money in our mailbox and actually do the work, have the attraction, have the gratitude, and let money come to us, flow from us. But here's what we want to do. God, I'm broke. I'm praying. I go, this is what God got to do, Ebony. Get some invisible ink out of nowhere. In, in, the, middle of your, in, in the middle of your mailbox, then make plastic in the middle of your mailbox and then cut a tree in the middle of your mailbox. Then make an envelope in the middle of your mailbox. Then twist circles into words that spell your name. Then send money to your bank. Then have them approve a check they don't know about. So you can have mailbox money unexpected. That's too much work for this existence when you could have used some practical steps and set yourself up for wealth one of these is easier than the other i i promise you i'll talk a point here's here's a talk point here's a here's a here's a talk point everybody write these seven things down as soon as you Ask this universe for anything. You going on a call to adventure. Please write that down. Hero's journey. Number two, you going to face the unknown. Number three, you going to have to make a decision. Number four, 
You're going to leave comfort behind if you make a decision. We're going to stop. Right there. You're going kind of fast. Sir. One, you're going on an adventure. Number two, you're going to face the unknown. Number three, you're going to have to make a decision. And number four, if you make that decision, you're never going to be comfortable again. There is nobody here over eight years old that has been comfortable since you made a decision to do what you wanted to do. That's not the way life works. I'm not asking you to be smart. I'm not asking you to be intellectual. I'm not asking you to analyze anything. I'm simply asking you to observe your human experience. To be in comfort is not to change your life. You know what, Grace, do me a favor. Y'all just hold, hold open discussion for like five more minutes. Grace, if thou could, I need you to I need you to go on your screen real quick. Share your screen. Type in the warrior that burnt the ships. There's many of proverbs out there. Napoleon Hill knocks it out the park. I don't care which version you pull up. I need to, and when I'm going to have you do read, Grace, I'm going to have you read it. Oh, you went to Exodus 14. Girl, we ain't doing no Bible lesson. Somebody asked what, what scripture was about the water turning sweet and then then the 12 springs. And so I had to it's look at that. I wasn't look, listen, I wasn't joking. Mm -hmm. it was, I'm putting it in chat. Yeah. Ex Exodus, yeah, Exodus 15, 27. Mm -hmm. Okay. Joking. Uh, wait a minute, hold on. Now, 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 Dr. Ferris is the resident the theologian. But when two verses are juxtaposed like that, that means to sit side by side. At some point, you got to pay attention. Or your Bible is random. How about that? Okay, how about that? All right. What, what was I putting in? I need, you to, I, need you to, I need you to pick up warrior that burnt his ships. Dr. Ferris said to chat to be in comfort is not to change your life. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> I like it. It's facts. If you are in comfort, you, you probably think of a rich warrior that burnt the ships. It don't matter. Either one. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all of them. It's, it's so, it's just so, Tori's been told plenty of times, Grace. Click, click. It don't matter. Click one. Don't matter. All right. That's fine. That's fine. No, that's fine. Do, do what you're doing. Do what you're doing. Hear me well, y'all. Okay, let me let me let me. I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna be gentle. I'm gonna put on my I'm gonna put on my Adriana voice. Her voice sounds better than mine. Mine is strong and raspy. I'm gonna put on my. Yeah, yeah, ready. If you are in the wherever lions are, the Serengeti, and you are dead, lions will skip over you and find a living gazelle. Rewind, press play. Even predators don't want dead animals. That's a vulture thing. That's a fungus thing. Anyway, so, uh, here we go. A long while ago, okay? Grace, you read it. I want, I want I want to Sunday school it, Grace. I want to Sunday school it. You know, if y'all don't know what that means, you're you going to find out in a second. You read it, Grace. <laughs> a long while ago. There, a great... Sunday school makes that right there, Grace. This <laughs> means somebody said this way before I got here, Tracy. Is that okay? All right, then go ahead, Grace. A great warrior had to make a decision which ensured his success on the battlefield. Stop right there, Grace. I could give you all what Latin, what decision mean in Latin word and all this stuff, but I won't, I won't do that to you. I'll just tell you that according to this text, a decision, you know what, Grace, if you don't mind, let's do some sentence diagram real quick. I hated this in Greek and Hebrew, but it actually works out from the favor now. <laughs> it actually works out for me. <laughs> so if we take a long while ago, we move that out the way, Grace, a great warrior great is just a modifier of warrior so warrior would be a noun 
had a decision to make without boring you with genitive and 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 and, and adjectival concord and subject verb agreement i'll just give it to you simple so everybody can understand that a great warrior and had to make a decision a working in tandem here because had to make a decision is the action happening by the great warrior we can call this a direct object I could get more specific, but I don't want to lose everybody, which ensured his success on the battlefield is an indirect object. If you don't understand what I'm saying, what I'm saying is the thing receiving the action first is the decision. And based on that decision, Grace, it impacted the battlefield. Antonio, what you saying? The battlefield and success, that's what y'all trying to get. What you're missing is the great warrior. If Grace, do me a favor, highlight had to make a decision. Just highlight the whole thing. I'm going to read this sentence now. I'm going to get rid of a long while ago. We're going to call that for simplicity, evocative or a prepositional phrase. We're just going to get rid of that whole thing right there, okay? A great warrior, which ensured his success on the battlefield. That sentence still makes sense. A great warrior is what's hap is is who is happening. Making a decision is what is happening. I'm my English classes are really firing off in my head. We're like, no, don't say it that way, but I'm trying to keep it simple for y'all. Which ensured his success on the battlefield. So what I'm trying to tell you, Grace, a decision will determine if you take your butt on the battlefield. Stop your screen, Grace, so they can pay attention to me. That was in the text. You should have pulled it back up, Grace. But the warrior did not get on the battlefield until the warrior made a decision. Thank you, Dad. My, my, my dad said, hmm. The warrior didn't get I, on the I, battlefield. I, I, like, I, I, I like you said to make this thing protect personal. And when I call back, I like to tell you how I see it personal and everything you say, if that's okay. That's fine by me. That's fine by me. Call on back okay. in. That's fine okay. by me. The caller had Listen, hold this. The warrior ain't get on the field until he made a decision. Grace, pull the text back up. Let's see what happened. Adriana, you fooled around and made a decision to believe in me. Battlefield. Okay. Stop so, the screen. I'll stop the screen, Grace. Stop the screen. Go ahead and say what you got to say. I just want people to pay attention. Go ahead, Grace. Okay. Um, Renee has been telling us that she is reading Thinking Grow Rich. And I said, you know what? I called her. I said, I want to read it with you. She said, okay. Uh, she's, she said, I'm on chapter six right now, but I'll stop and you, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to chapter three for you. I said, okay, so I'm reading. And I can't remember if Desire chapter one or two. Anyway, when you, this is one of the many, one of the books that we went over leadership class. Mm -hmm. And in here, um, it's it's in the same, on the same page where it talks about the warrior. And because you said it, because, yeah, I, you said it because I, I just write down stuff. The battlefield happens when you make a decision. Yeah. Um, if you're not on the battlefield, you can't win. If there's no battlefield, there's no success. I said so, that yeah. a long time ago, didn't I? Years ago. Years ago. Right every okay. <clears throat> y'all almost made me cuss. Let me help y'all out. If you ain't on the battlefield, inmate, I can't trust you because you don't make decisions. And is subject to monitoring. To accept this free call, press one. To thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Otis. Okay, hold on. Give me, give me like one minute, Daddy. You going first, Otis? If you ain't got no battles in your life, you ain't made no decision to have a life. What you've done is you said somebody need to take care of me. And I don't trust dependents. I provide for dependents. I don't trust them. I know you love your child. 
You're not trusting your child to solve your problems. Oh, they didn't like that, uh, Renee. They didn't like that. Some of y'all married to dependents, but I ain't gonna bother y'all. I'm, mo I'm, I'm moving on, Dr. Ferris. I done crossed the line. I'm moving on. Just let me just let me just say this one thing. I done crossed the line. I done cross, I crossed the line. My bad. I'm meddling. I'm meddling. Grace, if you aren't on the battlefield, you have not made a decision. And if you have made a decision, Neil Donna Walsh says the opposite going to show up. Phil, you know I ain't lying. The, the opposite is the battlefield. If y'all have said any time this year, I'm going to have a better life, your mama is going to show you no, you're not. Your daddy going to show you no, you're not. Whatever you care about, your mortgage payment, what, whatever is sacred to you, the battlefield is going to show up right there. Let, let me borrow Jerome's devil just for a second. Why would the devil bother Jerome with something that don't affect Jerome? The devil only going to bother you with something that hurt you. I'm sorry. Hurt you. Not hurt you. I'm sorry. Hurt you. I have a master's degree. Shame on me. All right, go ahead, Dad. Come on. You know, uh, you, you said about this sacred text and making it personal, and you said something profound in the beginning that they spawned the, 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 their enemy and left rich, and they were in the death of rich, but wanted to go back to that uh, poverty state because they were familiar <laughs> to that way of life. Right. But this is how I make that personal. I'm saying, uh, God, uh, Tony, I know you made this possible. Mm. I like what you offer me, and I like it when you make hard things possible. But now you are asking me to maintain what you made possible, and that's where I got to fly. As long as you keep doing it, as long as you keep making it happen, I can walk in it. But now you're telling me to get on the battlefield and maintain it, right. and that's where I got to fly. That's where I got to fly. You know what? But you did keep it with y'all. <laughs> you know what, Dad? We're going to start a conversation right there. Uh, Grace, you first. Can, you, can I say yeah. something? Can you I, can okay. I say you something right there? Real, I'm you sorry. Can, I, you, he you, said you, that, you, and that right there, he said, um, like, oh, my gosh. Uh, that you, that uh, really hit home. Like, that really hit home. Because you, they left rich. They had all the money. They still wanted to go back into what was comfortable for them because that's what was comfortable and that's what we do. And I say we because I'm a part of that. And then at the same time, it's like you don't realize all the things that you have. And instead of you going forward, because like what you just said is like God's the one that brought you out. And now God's wanting you to maintain what he's already brought you through. But right. at the same time, God is not saying you got to do it on your own. God is saying to trust me, I got you. Yes, you already saw me do it for you before. Let me keep helping you. And now you can do it for yourself, but you got to trust that I'm right there with you, with the, giving you the power to be able to fight those battles, to still win and to still conquer. But like what, what he just said, he's like, we be sitting up there thinking that, oh, no, now we got to try to do it by ourselves. God, you brought me out of this. I can't do it on my own. But God ain't even asking us to do it on our own. God's saying, hey, I got you. I got your back, but go, you got to be the one to go ahead and take the, you know, step in there, take the lead, and I'm right there next to you fighting this battle with you. That's what I got from that. So you know, I'm, I'm going to say something right here. We 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 are very deep in discussion. I'm going to say something. If one of y'all, whoever I hit, speaketh thee. Okay, you say something on the tail end. Ouch! Of just, ouch! Ouch! Already. <laughs> There's very little times that God, this universe, whatever, is going to tell you, be alone. There's very little times. There's a sure fire time, Susan, where God says, be alone. It is to be recharged. So you hey. get around people. You, 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 you missed it. It is not be alone so you can fix your problems. That's not what that's there's nowhere in the Bible, there's nowhere in the Quran that just says, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, talk to me. I told you I was gonna hit somebody. Talk to me. <laughs> to, 
to be alone, but then you got to recharge, but you recharge it for other, other folks. You're you give always them, recharging. You're giving them words. You're giving them exhortations. You're giving them encouragement. But I'm in here <laughs> yeah. broke and, and saved. <laughs> okay. That's, you, know, you know why you, 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 you hear what he said? He's a healer. Listen, healers, ain't your job to heal me. Stop, stop healing me. It's your job to invite the light in me to heal myself. Mm, oh, wow. Th this By is what showing me the light that you have. Yeah, your hug is supposed to activate my light. Your word is supposed to activate my light. It is not supposed to me to transfer my toxicity on you so you can go home and kick the dog in the mouth. You're no good to your ministry. Toxic. Okay, let's back up. We got two things. We got two things here. Two things just came out. Number one, this idea that I need to fix something is nowhere in no sacred text. There's not a single sacred text that says, well, Dr. Ferris, if you really wanted to change, fix it. They, every ascendant master that ever come to this place has said, create things that need no fixing. The just shall live by faith. Whatever you say to this tree, Whatever you say to this, the same thing I did to this mountain. Man, you, man, you can do this fig tree. Tell it to be cast up, picked away. Uh, uh, Gideon, you, you, you mighty man of valor, why he cowering up. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole story in itself. I'll skip it. I don't want to skip it. There's a the little, the little Baptist preacher in me wants to go, preach me, preach me, preach me. I want to do it so bad, but I'm going to not do it. Sometimes... Y'all are fixing things God trying to tear apart. Well, I am talking today, Tanya. That is so true. That is so Yes, true. you are. Uh -huh. If the first law of thermodynamics says energy can never be created and never be destroyed, then how is you on, on earth trying to fix your problems when it can never be <laughs> destroyed? But if you pause and create the solution to your problem that you never have to fix, your life would be better. But here's what they don't teach you, Diana. You can't fix something your mind has created. <laughs> this is why all y'all sacred texts exist, to tap into a higher consciousness so you can then fix your problems. It's not, lean not to your own understanding. Am I, if, if, if I added, to, if I, if I messed that up, let me know, Jerome, if I, we, we, it's not about fixing things. <laughs> it is 100% about creating things worthy of you. So I want to bring up a new thing. <clears throat> well, it's old, like two years ago, but new thing here. Whoever this, I don't know, spirit, gas, I don't know, whatever you feel that makes you want to say something. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know your school of thought. We got Muslims here. We got witches here. We got, we got every school of thought here. <clears throat> I've never met most of you. I don't know, say it again, that. <clears throat> you know what I, uh, I, I've come to realize about those of us who claim we try to fix things uh, in our own sense, but it was not so much that in my case I'm trying to fix something more than the fact that I'm trying to maintain something. I'm not ready to let go, but I'm going to be moving beyond that. Okay. Especially when, when opportunity is my second script, where God has already and prepared a greater new thing for me, and I'm just trying to fix and maintain something he didn't, he didn't move me beyond. Okay, great. I'm trying to move me beyond. So it's more of a maintaining. Grace put in the chat, watch it, Mr. Antonio. She talking to you. She said, watch it now. <clears throat> Hold on for a moment. We're gonna, I was going to talk about something else. I'm not going to forget. 
let's let's pick up from this last comment. Maintain. I'm not saying you're not supposed to. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. But I would like to have a legitimate conversation on if we have a spirit of maintain. It's it's a simple question. I'm I'm not. I don't just. <clears throat> Susan did. Did, do you have a spirit of maintain? Is that what it is? Is that, is this, is that, you know, let, let's take, let's take the tip maker, Paul. And he says something real great, Tanya. I'm going to be a base and a bow. Jerome, is that maintaining? Is that, that, is that maintaining? Is, is learning to be a millionaire and broke, is that maintaining? No, it's a, it's a it's a it's a fair question. Who who's got an answer? But but the tech maker was saying that I've learned how to trust the one who created me and not me myself. Okay. He My wanted it. He didn't like want that on. He didn't want that though. He told him get three times, get it on. He said, uh uh. Fair enough. He said, but he took my grace is sufficient. Fair enough. And that, and that was so he knows how to do this, he knows how to do this. And that, and listen to me, that ain't easy, buddy. Oh, first off, you didn't come here for nothing to be easy, but you know, I'll come back to that in a little bit. Let me get to Adriana's com comment. I, 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 every now and then, I Anglo Saxon her name, even though I speak Spanish. I gotta go to Adriana, even though I know it's Adriana. It says, I think I'm starting to get it. Stagnation in my life, somebody comfortable with the current situation is not a sustainable position to be in because of trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations, you, you know, she grew up Catholic, talking about trials and tribulations. What's she at? Is she still on this call? I don't know. She at? Anyway, <laughs> trials and tribulations uh, in this life constantly disrupt your circumstances. We need to decide how we want to change our circumstances and pursue what it takes to get to where we want to be. Nobody's going to disagree with that. What I would like to do here is take what Jerome said, take what my dad said, take what Adriana just said. And let's have a discussion. My dad said, well, that don't sound like maintaining, sound like adjustment. Jerome basically said, child, look, that's basically what he said, all right? That's that's basically what he said. Okay. That's basically what he said. Hey, it is what it is. You know, Paul was just like, hey, hey, I'm here now at this point. I wonder. Okay, good on. Go, go ahead, Dad. It's just, we, we, we in it now. And, 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 and the reason I say is adjusted from the very fact he say I've learned. You don't learn anything by maintaining. So the very fact he said I've learned says he's been adjusted to his circumstances and what life was uh, uh, dealing to him. So that's why I said adjusted and not a maintaining. I've never thought about that a day in my life. That actually, you, you know, there's a phrase, the ring of truth. You know, that you hear something for the first time, it's like, I don't know, but that really sound like it was right, though. That felt good. That that had the ring of truth on it, man. That is, you know. Listen. I like that. Tell him I like that. Okay. He 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 he, he, he. listen. I'm not trying to be semantical. I'm not trying to fix your words. But maintaining and adjusting do seem like two different connotations, two different feelings of words. They do feel like that. I'm, it's not that I'm trying to confuse you. Well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very much so trying to confuse you. I hope you leave this call confused. Inspired, but confused. Well, because I don't want you to trust me. I want you to trust whatever your sources are. Like I, want, I, want, I want to inspire you to go read something outside of me because this is cognitive. So I'm doing, so right now I'm doing cognitive processing therapy and behavior therapy, more behavior therapy right now. So cognitive processing therapy is when you challenge your thoughts in real time. I'll give you an idea of this. Dr. Ferris does something bad to me. I go, he always do this to me. Does he always? Does he always do this to me? Because always is pretty consistent. Has no. he ever been? Has he ever been nice to you, Antonio? Yes. So he, so therefore, what you have about Dr. Ferris is not a thought that is true. And if it's not true, then you must challenge your thinking so you can get rid of your trauma, which I'm coming back to. 
because cognitive so cognitive behavioral therapy is about changing your behavior is about you on your own saying i need a new paradigm cognitive processing therapy is about you recognizing you respond from trauma only we 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 this in 15 minutes the rest of this call is about trauma i hope y'all don't let me show y'all man i don't want y'all to think i'll be up here winging it or nothing like that because i would never Sorry, you was about to run the new people off Look, I don't want y'all to think I'm up here winging it, Jerome. I got notes. You understand? I don't. I don't want. I don't want you to think. You know, and I just be up here f- shooting from the hips. No, I, 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 I got. I got a whole week to get in front of y'all. I got notes about this here. The whole next Mr. Smith. Hour. Yes, sir. Mr. Smith, talk to me before you end this call. I mm-hmm. need you to respond to the comment that that Mr. Deanna made. made and, and, Therefore, mm-hmm. are you always on the battlefield with the wrong armor? Ooh, that's correct. That's correct. That was that's come correct. on now. That's correct. Oh, you got you got to respond to that, sir. I like that, yeah. Diana. Stop. Because if you're okay, so we need the Grace. Oh, she's not here. So the rest of that story goes. Okay, good, Grace. Put put your screen up. We're going. I'm, I'm going to show y'all why y'all always on the battlefield with the wrong armor. Versus the right armor, even though this is not a law, this is just you've never, I've never seen you in your life. I've only seen your trauma in you. I've never seen you. But isn't it because we're always waiting on somebody else to fix the problem? I mean, so we never really fix the problem. So we're always in trauma. I had 15 thoughts pop in my head at the same time. So all I'm gonna do is just be silent on that one. I mean, that that sound like uh that sound like it was true. I don't know. Like, like I don't even but want- I'm just thinking. <laughs> but with that, it's not anybody else's Dion, you know what I'm saying? It's not really anybody else's responsibility to fix us. Like when it comes to the trauma that we have, we have to re- to me, I'm just thinking we need to recognize the trauma that we have and we need to address our own trauma. And we got to work through getting past our own trauma so that we not sitting around waiting on somebody else to fix our trauma. But at the same same time, if we don't ever deal with our trauma, we are always fighting with the wrong armor. Exactly, because we are a trauma person and not us being our real us. I'm about to get in trouble. My dad called me yesterday. It was like, I want to be on your call tomorrow, son. I was like, okay. And I totally forgot until you called me at 529. I was like, oh, yeah. Watch this here. Tracy, you changed the whole class just now. We we had a we had a whole agenda. And now you done you done fooled around and kicked it out. Okay. I have a question for y'all. <laughs> My bad. I know where I'm going. I have a question for y'all. Do we Are we commanded to fix ourselves? Period. I, I had I had more to say, but let's just keep it there. Are we? I, I, whatever your school of thought is, hold that, keep it, and I want you to come from that, because that's why I'm asking this very broad, open ended question. I know, and, and I'm and I'm going to preface this. I know. The preachers, the imams, and the rabbis say, fix yourself. I know the motivational speaker says, fix yourself. I'm not saying they wrong. I'm asking you, is there a reputable school of thought? I, I'm, I'm with Deanna. Um, love, that, that's where we're coming from. So if, if everything you're doing is not in love, then you, you've got to you got pivot, turn, and... and come from that spot so if you see that you're not then i'm thinking you are fixing yourself because you see it and you do something different what happened is i i receive you i'm not Mm -hmm. yeah no no go ahead 
I just want to. I just want to really muddy the waters up. To be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So I just, you just gave me a good platform to ask her. What happens if your love is jacked up? What happens if you're depending on love to fix yourself, but the only love you know is abuse? Mm-hmm. Watch it. I okay. Got mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I'm all right. I can talk. all up I'm in an area now, so. that I know about. Okay, we got okay. five people want to talk. Okay, we got <laughs> we got struck a nerve. Antonio T. Smith Jr. Yes, ma'am. Come on now. <laughs> so now, <laughs> one of the things that is important to to know is that one rule is two can never walk together if they don't agree. Right. Mm-hmm. That's one. So. If you are mending one another, you have to be mended by soul first. That's fair. Right? That's because fair. there's no sense of being whole only when you with someone. Can't make somebody else heartbeat if yours is dead. Correct. So no matter what happens, if you are dependent on someone else to be your defining purpose, yeah. it wouldn't make sense. They're going to let you down every time, huh? Correct. Mm. So one of the things that has to be done is to seek first what that kingdom is in you. Oh, we got to define what that. Is your peace? We got to define that. That needs to be defined. Keep going. Grace, put... put what is your joy? Fine. <laughs> and what are you walking in? Because if you don't know what that is, you cannot fix yourself. And the only way you can define that is to be connected to not say, what's the word? Esoterial? Esoteric. That's, esoteric just means in a most state. people don't know. Most people don't know. <laughs> right, go, right. In a higher level of spiritual existence right so there you go there you go yeah yeah you know where is that so, right so one cannot live in just the human form in order to be able to fix themselves the natural way of fixing oneself and or healing oneself in the physical mm. is by herbs minerals all the things that preserve a body, the flesh. However, when you talk about the spiritual, then you have to go towards that spiritual food. Now, who holds that spiritual food? That is where you are supposed to be drawn to. And then that can continue to help you to mend your mind, heal your heart, and so on and so forth. Something lucky, just saying. Just that was, saying. That was, that was a great argument. The, 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 the now, <clears throat> unfortunately for y'all, I got my eyes closed. I'm, I'm gonna blame Doctor Ferris for stuff for for a second. Unfortunately for y'all, I can hear your assumptions in your arguments and the the lack of definition in your arguments right this is what this is what people like him do to me i'd be like damn i thought i was on it either way you know that's just that's just what it goes everything she says fantastic grace i do want to come back in defining what does what does it mean to seek ye first i do the kingdom seek ye first the kingdom i do want to come back and define that as a group <clears throat> and i do want to define this idea of getting better I do want to define that. Trenace, you were next. And, 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 and hold on, before Trenace go, you know, we're going to be here to, for another hour and six minutes. Uh, y'all going to be talking for 80% of that, for sure. I, I gave y'all my long introduction. You know, I gave y'all like, I, the, the, this class is like, this class is like the Gospels. It's a, it's a long introduction. And then the suffrage. <laughs> so we ought to know what I'm talking about. 
Because <laughs> the whole conversation is <laughs> the whole conversation <laughs> is passion. And I don't mean passion the way y'all just said. I mean the passion. The whole conversation. Because we don't know the answers, right? The truth is, no matter how much we know, nobody knows nothing. But we get smarter by having these conversations. And when I let y'all talk, then that's where the cognitive behavioral comes in at. Because everybody gets a voice. Therefore, you walk away going, okay, I learned something today. Yeah, because you talked. You learned something because you talked. Nobody signs up. Uh, can I go to a lecture? That's that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not. If it wasn't for the church, or let me just say that. If it wasn't for religion and the universities, there would be no oral teaching. We we 100% have surpassed technology to where we don't need an Antonio before a crowd talking. You say, what about seminars? Seminars might as well be church. Don't fool me now. Come on now. It's the same thing. Okay. Oral teaching is sacred. I'm actually defending oral teaching. It's sacred. We wouldn't even, before the written word, which is the greatest invention of mankind, we had oral teaching. The second greatest invention of mankind is clearly the internet. I mean, it's it's impossible for it not to be. Clearly the internet. Third is fire. I'm literally putting the internet before fire. <laughs> I'm putting the internet before fire. <laughs> but anyway, Trinace, you had something to say because you y'all don't know if y'all heard Trinace jump. Trinace jumped. I can talk now. I'm not in no car no more. Uh, yeah, she was ready. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So this is my man. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So this is this is the way that I think about this, because you know I always think about some stuff and it'd be crazy when I think about it. Give me all the crazy. I want the crazy and the cussing. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. You know, let me let me let me get them. Y'all 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 don't know. I've told everybody, bring your drink. Bring your smokes, bring your cigars. Okay, there you go. All right, bring bring your drink. I'm not telling you that do or don't. I'm just telling you that these folk are balanced. They they listen to R and B and gospel. You, you understand they they balanced. You know they they know. Yep. And amazing grace. Is that is that all right, Nate? All right, all right, all right. Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead, Trinace. Go ahead. So, no, we can't fix ourselves, which is why um, my verbiage when I talk about what I do is I help you, I assist you access because mm -hmm. you have to access what is already there. Sometimes um, mm -hmm. there's so much over us. Another assumption. I like that. Okay. Grace, put access to what's already there. Please. Please put, put that down. Um, there's so much over us. Now, my the my favorite gospel artist, Ty Tribbett. Okay. He's been going very wild and has been very popular lately. Grace but told before he before he got popular, talking about how this, people assume he said the church was whack, when he was saying religion was whack, not really? the church. Um, week before last on Instagram, he said that he got a Tesla and he has to get a new tent on his Tesla. And then he connected that to us living a human experience. When you five, something happens to you, you got the tent. Seven, something happens to you, you got another tent. Uh, nine, happens, nine, something else. So we're getting all of this tent. So you have to peel back the tent to access what you, th the, the, the tent is what's broken. The okay. inside is not what's broken. The tent, tenting part is what's broken. And for me, that was just a good analogy because when you think about a person walking around, imagine Antonio, because Antonio liked to pick on everybody. Let's let's just imagine Antonio because he always messing with somebody. I get paid for it. You understand? I, I so, got this for it. <laughs> so let's imagine every time, every time Antonio say something crazy, which is often, that we yep. wrap his whole body in um, masking tape. And then by the end of this call, all you can see is the shape of his body. 
And whatever he got on the inside, there's nothing wrong. Well, there is something a little bit wrong with him. But whatever is wrong with him, it, whatever is right with him is on the inside. So you have to pull the masking tape off to right. get to the inside, which is what is right. Okay. The Bible, since everybody likes to talk about the Bible, I try not to, but you can connect it in life because it tells us that we were we were created, we were fearfully and wonderfully made. So if there was something wrong with us, why would we be fearfully and wonderf wonderfully made? Life experience takes it. It can affect your. It, it can definitely impact your spirit. So oh, that's, what, that's what that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it it, it that's can. The point of ascension. No, the whole point of ascension is to be impacted by something and get past it. Keep going. So, with that being said, we have to get an understanding of how to level, how to access more. It's not even like a level up. It's just like a level inside and access, a pulling back a layer of that to ascend. And I think I'm I'm done talking for this moment. Who right, knows? Tracy. I may talk again. Tracy, come on through here and preach. Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. You got yourself muted, Tracy. I was putting it in oh. the tape. No, no. Okay. Good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you. Hello. Can you hear us? You okay. Front? So, hmm. So that's why I put in the chat, what does Exodus Fix mean? And what does Exodus Fix look like? Okay. That's I, I I wanted to we're So we are fearfully and wonderfully made. However, there's a part of us when we do go through all of these trials and tribulations that causes us to get out of line with our original intent of our creation, in my thoughts. And so for me, the fixed part is fixing ourselves and getting back in alignment with the purpose that God play, or your creator put placed inside of you so that you can get back to doing what God's created you to do. I love the analogy of the tent because what you were saying to me, I saw so much, so many of us have so much tent on us. You can't even see what's inside of us. Just like a car with dark tent, a lot of dark tent. You can't even see the person that's really on the inside of the car, just like people. You can't see what's on the inside and the real person and the real heart of someone because they have so much tint on them from all the hurt and all the things that have happened in life. They're not even being their authentic them because they have these walls up and these defenses up. And a lot of times they respond in life based on that. Completely agree. And I think that's the part where when you're saying pulling back the tent, that's the actual fixing part in my thoughts. But right. it depends on what we consider tent. That's right. Yeah. And the other thing about that, we can, if you got so much tent on, you don't even know who your authentic self is. When you think about people say, that's just how I am. <laughs> I'm surly because that's just how I am. This is just how I am. How many times do you hear? I just, that's just how I am. My um, best friend, when his son was growing up, his, his mother would say, that's just BJ being BJ. What do you mean? What does that mean? What does what does that mean? So is this just a person being the person, or is this just a tent, or is this just a trauma? Big T or you little T? I mean, what is it? You just gave me another question that's going. Ooh, we, ooh, okay, I got two. I got two. God bless y'all. Here we go. I'm not even. I'm not even for the preamble. It. I'm okay with the tent analogy because I understand what he was trying to do based on what you said that you cannot see the important soul in the seat due to the tent i'm okay with that it's lots of allegory there but i'm okay with that i'm not okay with the car cease to be important in his illustration so I would like to throw a wrench, not a wrench. I would like to add a wrinkle here and <clears throat> ask which is most important, the man or the car? 
It's a serious question. Now, before you answer, I'm going to skip all the answers so we can get to other stuff. And I'm going to tell you, I like to think, Tracy, that this is what, now this is allegory here, but this is what <laughs> we can call new creation. Because the moment you get in the car, you cease to be Tanya and you're not the car. You're a new creation, Tanya, driving the car. They're going to they, they're gonna start catching me in a little bit, Grace. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to do it again because that's, that's what I do. I'm charismatic. I got you. Oh, I'm going to do it again. Tanya can't get to the direction and the destination, at least not without the, the Oregon Trail, the Pilgrim's Journey. She get to California four months from now. <laughs> but Tanya in the car can get to California from Texas, because I'll just say Texas, in 17 hours. 11 of that going to be in Texas, though. I'm going to just tell you right now, just so we're clear. 11 of that's going to be in Texas, okay? 11 of that's going to be in Texas. It's safe to say here <clears throat> That <laughs> yeah, I'm very Baptist. It's safe to say here that taking his analogy, it seems to be once I get into a car with a purpose, you become a new creation. Lots of allegory. I'm not trying to use the word. I'm just trying to say that grace in a car going somewhere is no longer grace and she's no longer the car because she's never been the car. She's Grace going somewhere and Grace couldn't be going somewhere until she was transformed in the car. Let's put that in the spirituality. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. So you remember a couple of um, uh, last year sometime when we were talking about vehicles, tools, yep. whatever way you want to use it, vehicles to yep. get you to money. Okay, okay, you start. Okay, okay. We are gonna, we're going to go like that. Yep. The vehicle, when, when you choose a vehicle, I choose a vehicle to get okay. me to the destination. That's what the car represents. That's what the new business represents. That's what the new tool represents. It's a, it becomes an addition to who you are and it changes you because now you have have what you need to get to the destination okay so, so let, okay keep going keep going so maybe that i mean the, I okay, okay so let me no no no, no hold on. I, got you, I got you let me let me let me jump in right here let me restate what i said this time i'll i'll i'll, I'll lay rest the poetry in my tongue and we'll go into just actual english grace so there's a part there's a there's a there's a part of speech called participle it means there's in, in English is I N G in Spanish is D A D like see you died, you know it's, it's D A D or no excuse me uh, ando like um, I say you viando it, it's raining okay it's raining it means it's an ongoing action without an end in sight. That being said, Trinace, if if we are Grace, she's Grace. If it's a car, she's not, she's still Grace. If she's Grace in the car, she's still Grace. But if she's Grace in the car, going somewhere, she's a new creation. I'll do it a little easier. Everybody has seen steps before, yes? Everybody seen steps before? Let's say easy number 14 steps. And let's say you're at the top of the steps. So we have different tenses of speech here. I'll use, I go to the store, I go downstairs. That means grace. You are saying that you are in the action of going downstairs and it's an assumption that you're about to start or something like that. I went downstairs saying I already did that. I've arrived at my destination. I'm going downstairs, says. I'm in the process of doing it, but I haven't gotten there. Third time, Grace, everybody going to get it. What if Otis 
is on his way to his best self, but ain't got there yet. The church teaches y'all to consistently be believing, going, believing. How many of y'all have said, keep believing, keep believing, keep believing. Don't fool me now. The problem with that, Dr. Ferris, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, is the church is really good teaching how to ask, really good teaching how to believe, not too good at teaching you how to receive. So we do a really good job keeping you in believing state. But the problem with that, Jerome, is as long as you're believing, it's like grace on the steps. It's an ongoing action with no end in sight. So what happens is you keep God about to bless you. He's going to bless you. Never blessed. There's a great story in, in, in sacred text of this poor woman betrothed. Uh, let me stop that. Uh, young and married or about to be married. Sorry. I'm trying to, my, my, my degrees want me to use big words. My Holy Spirit is like, stop that stupid. They don't understand, right? So this is, I got, I got, I got two things clashing inside of me right now. Mary was told, tra we use Tracy. Tracy was told by an angel, uh, you're going to get pregnant. Holy Spirit going to sit upon thee. It's going down. Mary was like, I mean, excuse me. Tracy was like, uh-uh, not me. Holy Spirit was like, well, angel was like, yeah, it's going to happen. So I, don't, I, I don't know what happened, but Tracy caught that, ran to a whole different city and told her cousin Elizabeth what hadn't happened yet. Marvin Sapp say, praise him in advance. There's this, there's this identity, Trinace, of receiving Okay, let me, everybody listen. At some point, you need to receive what you're praying for before you get it. And when I'm not talking about the wooey fooey, go through the actions, oh, it's in my hands. No, you axed and now you're done with it. You're no longer stressing about it. You're not repeating yourself about it. You know, like you know, it is come to pass, not will. And you're already adjusting your life for it. San Antonio, make that more simple. Dr. Ferris, who's got the highest education here, did not become, and he's younger than me. He's like six months younger than me or something. Dr. Ferris did not become PhD when he became PhD. That's not the way it works. He could have been smoking weed with his friends. Popped hot on the piss test. He could have. No, in order to become in, no, in order to become a lawyer, you got to do that before you're in law school. In order to become a P PhD, you got to do that at your bachelor's, at your master's. All right, make it more simple, Antonio. I graduated in bachelor's. Well, I graduated in master's too. We we'll just took the bachelor's. I 100% graduated, Susan, when I applied for school. Our finite brains won't let us understand and handle that. But when I, here's your shout cue, Grace. When I applied for school, I scheduled my breakthrough in graduation. Talk, sir. Because this is my thought process. When you apply for school, you just automatically thinking, yeah, I'm going here so I can graduate and get my degree. Nobody thinks, yeah, I'm going to go, but it's, I ain't going to pass. No. <laughs> if you thought that, you wouldn't go. <laughs> Not only is that a fact, Grace, I'm going to push that further. Before Dr. Ferris became a doctor, somewhere when he was 18, 19, applying for undergrad, he scheduled his PhD graduation. I'm trying to tell y'all every seed, 
automatically by universal standards schedules your breakthrough. Rewind, press play. You out here praying for stuff. For what? You already prayed. Now get out there and plant the seed and schedule the harvest. See, they don't see this. This is where this is this, now. This is where church. Oh, you talking to me. You talking to me. Just keep talking. I'm, I'm, trust okay. me, I'm catching it. Keep talking. Okay. This is where church they folk, do. kingdom folk love me when I do stuff like this. Kingdom folk be like, you know what? You is all right. The moment you plant a seed, you 100% schedule that harvest. That is science. That's not, forget, forget God, forget your religion. If you go to your backyard right now, and you plant three seeds in the same spot. One of them would germinate, die, and produce for you the fruit that you do not deserve. I plead, oh my God. I hope you understand that you don't deserve harvest. You did not come here to deserve harvest. Harvest is a byproduct of you being alive. You don't need to deserve something for being alive. What you need to do is do the work and plant it. God didn't put you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. That's why I say open your mouth. <laughs> Y'all out here trying you gotta to open your mouth for a thing. Listen, you're right. Y'all out here trying to deserve what you pray for. Plan it. Okay, they see they 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 mad at me right now. To bind it or loose it, because either way is loose or bound. <laughs> I'm just you're right. Do you that that scripture? I ain't Tanya. If you take program classes, you are going to be a program. Y'all, y'all making y'all making God's job way too difficult. It is my job to simplify what all the teachers have come before you in complexed. Let me make this very simple. If you plant a seed, everybody write this down. If I, put it in the first person, if I plant a seed, I automatically schedule my harvest. Why don't you change it when I plant a seed? Because <laughs> we plant, we, we, I mean, we planting seeds all the time. You, you, I thank, thank you so much for making me better. When I plant a seed, I 100% schedule my harvest. Men, 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 Dr. Ferris are doing some stuff behind the scenes. Doesn't matter what it is. That's a seed. He don't have to pray. I don't know if he is. He don't have to worry. I don't know if he is. I know that his line app messages automatically scheduled his breakthrough. This is why I'm so successful in the business. This, this oh my God. Tracy, I got you. Don't forget what you're fit to say. I, I I need to talk about me for a second, Mike. Some of y'all don't really see me behind the scenes, but if you, 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 Mike, the sales team really do. I do a lot of stuff that people don't know I do, but it's all good. <clears throat> oh, Mike, Mike got the witness of the day. <laughs> <laughs> got the witness of the day for sure, for sure. If the reason why I have been successful at life has had nothing to do with First off, I'm black, so so we can just stack the deck against my favor right there. I know you, you don't see, I know you don't know I'm black. I know you don't know. I know you've never seen that I'm black. I know, I know that. But I'm not supposed to be where I'm at. It has nothing to do with I'm determined. <laughs> no, no. Determination is not why I'm successful. <laughs> being stupid is why I'm successful. I need all y'all to write this down. I'm dead serious. I'm not successful because I'm determined. I'm not successful because I'm smart. I'm successful because I'm stupid and I keep planting seeds no matter how much I get my neck broke. See, y'all don't see, see, the reason why you don't want to hear me because your ego, how I start off the call, you can't hear me because I'm saying it's that simple. And your ego is like, no, the hell it ain't. It can't be that simple because if it was that simple, I would have it. Every time I lose, before I get up, 
I plant a seed. I told y'all just last week, there are no gardens on mountaintops. The only way you get to the mountaintop is the work you do in the valley and the garden you plant in the valley. And how long you're going to stay on that mountaintop is how many seeds you plant in that valley that you can eat on that mountaintop. Universally, universe or scientifically, I don't care how you want to say it, Ina, there's two times a year this earth yields harvest, spring and fall. Your job is to do so much great work in March that when you get to September, you don't have to eat everything you did in March. Y'all missed it. But the way we live is we plant in March and then we absolutely eat everything in September and tell our kids, now get some insurance and bury me. Our job, listen, oh my God. Everybody listen to me. Trace, I promise I'm going to get to you, but I am, my, my, my fingers is just, they just, just, it's, it's so much, I just feel so much in me right now. Winter is coming. Summer is coming. Right now, we just hit spring. July. August. June, July, and August. They're coming. Ain't going to be no planting no seeds. Ground going to be too dry. And here's, the, here's your problem. Y'all looking at what you got right now and going, man, ain't no sense in me playing this. It's just a little bit. When this universe says, give me your little bit, I'll multiply it in the principle of multiplication. But you don't have faith to be stupid. I'm, I'm a, Tracy, two minutes, I'm coming to you. Faith ought to make you stupid. Can I prove it, Tanya? Can I prove it? Okay. You need faith in two places. Faith to get started. You know what? I'm going to do this business. And I, I, I asked Jerome and he said this and I used chat GPT. All that smarts gave you faith. Can y'all see it? And then you start it like everybody else, Mike. And it didn't work. Uh oh. And then you heard a little sermon and you tried it again and it didn't work. And then you said, I'm not going to quit. Guess what? And it didn't work. And you said, This is my last time. And it didn't work. And you cried. And you got up again, Grace, and said, okay, this is my last time this time. And it didn't work. And then you finally hit rock bottom. And then that repo for your car came through. Help me, somebody. I'm, 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 only, I'm only trying to talk to real folk. I'm not even trying to talk to you folk that ain't never struggled. I'm, I'm only talking to folk. I got three repossessions on my stuff. I got three repossession on my stuff. I ain't gonna lie. Well, it's off my credit now. But I didn't. Have, I didn't have. I got my, the third time my car got repossessed. It didn't even get repossessed. I got a repossessed car and I owned the title. The engine blew out and I couldn't afford to pay it, and it stayed in the the shop so long they sold my car. How the hell you lose a car you own? Y'all don't want to hear me. Y'all don't want to. Y'all don't. Y'all don't want to hear me. That's all right. You, that's all right. I'm just telling you my dirt. So then we go, this ain't going to work. Now, this is the part I love, Otis. This is where I win and everybody I know loses. They go, they look backwards and they go, I tried this, I tried this, I tried that, I tried that. And they they get genius level smart about how none of this is going to work. Their faith has made them intelligent because those losses made them realistic. 
You see, it's not realistic that when we cut on the light bulb, I mean the light switch, daytime rush into a room. But thank God Thomas Edison or whichever slave he stole it from, I couldn't help myself. I, I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. Wouldn't realistic. You need faith two times, Tracy. Faith to get started. That's smart faith. Otis, then you need to be dumb. And you need faith to keep going. And let me tell you something. When your brother is telling you to get a job, I wish I had somebody that's going to listen to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> when your mama telling you to get a job, I ain't trying to do I ain't trying to bother nobody. I'm just talking. When your daddy telling you to get a job, when your finances telling you to get a job, when your, when your mortgage is not mortgaging at all, when them bills is being real, when them loud, when them bill collectors real loud, well, we're going to send you to jail. Y'all know what I'm talking about, huh? That's when you got to be stupid. You have to be smart enough to get started and stupid enough to keep going. Lean not to your own understanding. Jerome. Go ahead. Go ahead. I promise you. I'm talking to me. I'm all about ways to <laughs> You got to be smart enough to get started. Stupid enough to keep going. Tracy, just bar let me borrow another two minutes. Come here, Daniel. Hey, King, ain't you saying nobody's supposed to be praying around this Mo Scooter? You know, I ain't want to say Mo Scooter. <laughs> Your boy Daniel out there praying. <gasps> oh my God. Now we're going to get him. Nope. Nope. King, you ain't no punk. You, you, yeah, I know what come after that. You know what I'm saying? You ain't no punk. Player, there you go. That's not starts with a B. You you can't do that. So here's what happens, Susan. You're gonna love this part, Susan. This is in the Bible. Daniel gets deported in 605 BC. The temple falls in 586 BC. So when Daniel opens the windows towards Jerusalem, the temple is still standing, approximately six five hundred and fifty miles away. From the temple is where Daniel is. You don't believe me? Look it up. Don't believe me. This is what I do. My literal scholarship or whatever you want to call it is in Old Testament covenants. I got this stuff memorized. Listen to me. Daniel is deep. It's, there's three there's three major ways of deportation: 605, 597, 586. Daniel is the first wave of deportation. 605 BC, when Daniel opens up his windows to the east, it's about 604, 603, no later than 602 BC. The temple is still standing. The problem is, Susan, Daniel can't see 585 miles away, but Daniel goes, I can't see where my blessings come from, but I know where they come from. Rewind, press play. In order to be a Jew in 600... Okay, I'm trying not to preach. In order to be a Jew in 600 BC, you had to have a temple. Why, Antonio? Because blessings came from the temples. Forgiveness came from the temple. And God's presence was most holy at the temple. So therefore, Tanya, when Daniel needed blessings to come to him because he was about to die, forgiveness to come to him because he was about to die, and God's presence most holy because he was about to die, he opens up the windows and stupidly goes, I can't see it, but I know it's coming. And I wish I had somebody that just want to just sit here right there. This is where I'm at in my life right now, Tony. I can't see it. I can't see this company working. I can't see nothing working, but you know what? I'm stupid enough. I'm going to keep on going. Sometimes, Michael, you have to be stupid to have faith. Because I'm ready to join the stupid club. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the scholar on the planet going to argue with that. They stay still with it. It'd be a good book, but you get the point. 605 BC is when this man was deported. The temple was still standing and Daniel looks to where he can't see, but remembers where the power comes from. And stupidly says, I'm a believe in what I can't see. Blessed are those.
I forgot you do that, Grace. <laughs> Hey, come on, Tracy. You got it. Come on, Tracy. Come on, Tracy. Tracy did proper Jerry. I just we'll, we'll, we'll blame we'll blame Dion for this one today. Go ahead, Tracy. Is she there? Come there back to me. Okay. Go ahead, Prophet Jerry. Futuristic Jerry. You know, it, it, it it's it's powerful. You said that because. Um, no, I don't have a business, but y'all know what I'm doing with my book, but I want to make this personal. Make it personal. If you, if you didn't tell me to start when I did and exercise and working out and stuff. Now I went to therapy in December, Bishop, yes, sir. and they measured my leg. It was negative 70 hmm. they measured it last month how about it was a negative 35 look at that now if i were to stop that's a hundred percent just so you know mathematically keep going if i were to stop but what you told me to do mm. i didn't i stopped the 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 the, uh, the other one but if i were to stop the exercise if I would have stopped the Renee pulling on the leg, even yep. in pain and pain going, therapy's an hour and 30 minutes away. Yep. So if I would have stopped. Use gas money as an excuse. <laughs> Don't forget that because you're black. You know, exactly. I'm not, it's, none of folk, I'm not talking to y'all. <laughs> black folk, uh, non black folk lean back. Black fo black folk lean forward. You know how we is. I ain't got no gas for that. Okay, all right. We 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 can we can all come back now. We can all come. Come on. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Prophet Jerry. So it's it's just it's just to the point that if <laughs> I would have stopped, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So, you know, I can't say the day, I can't say the hour, but I know I'm getting up from this bed. And that's stupid. You get it? That is stupid. That's that's stupid. There's no logical reason that he believes that he is going to get up and walk. Everything against him is against him, and every bit of science says he's not going to walk. And the only reason that y'all have what y'all call mustard seed faith, <laughs> the only reason y'all have mustard seed faith is because you're stupid. <laughs> Yes, sir. You must be stupid to think you can change the world. Stupid to think that God going to save your house. And thank God for stupid people. Let's look at Forrest Gump. <laughs> what a great example. Now, I didn't see that coming, but what a great example. <laughs> Listen, it was so stupid for... Do you mind if I use your Jesus, Prophet Jerry? Is that okay? You know how stupid it was for Jesus to go to the cross? Y'all, you see, y'all not really paying attention to y'all y'all texts. Let me see. <clears throat> now, if I was in a different setting, Jerome, I wouldn't say it this way. I wouldn't. I, I, I know how to go up and down. You, you understand? I know how to go up and down. <clears throat> but just, just hear me out. The first time Jesus tried to march towards Jerusalem, his mama said, oh, that's way too soon for that, son. It's way too ah, 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 ah. Get out this temple, go back home. You ain't got to believe me. It's in the text, though. It's in the text. It's, it's in the text. Next, one of the next times you try to go march towards, uh, uh, excuse me, when I say march towards Jerusalem, I mean march towards death. Thomas go, Oh, no, nah, man, let's get this out of here. Let's go. Let's go do it. Shoot. Let's, let's get it in. I'm, I'm not joking to you. I know we call him Dalton Thomas, but I promise you, first time you meet Thomas, on, Thomas is like, let's go get it. Then. Let's get to Jerusalem right now. It was obvious that it was time for Jesus to die according to this narrative. And a damn nobody here. Smart enough to march towards a voluntary death. 
So if you share the Christian faith, thank God for stupidity. Because it's mighty fine and stupid to get publicly embarrassed. Y'all don't want to play. How many of y'all don't like to be embarrassed? Period. Come on, don't fool me now. Don't, no, 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 no. We know I need far more participation. Okay, maybe I, you know what? I used even, to be. Even, even, even <laughs> Judas was a stupid. <laughs> How many of y'all come from the old school? If you pitch the tent, that's what we have in the circus. I mean, oh, we're going to have it. Let's we go. go. Have it. Okay, we're going to have it. Let's go. Okay. How many of y'all hate to be lied on? Your character attack. Don't do it. Don't do it. Is it Jesus whole character was attacked? They made fun of Jesus so much, put in three different three three different languages. Look, that man was lied on, beat up. They whipped his beard off. Ain't none of that smart. And then one of y'all woke up this morning and go, you know what, God? Slay me. Can I give you another stupid person in the Bible? This man lost his kids, lost his cattle, lost his health. Who, talk about him. Who, who, who am I talking about? Who am I talking about, Jerome? Joe. 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 Good old Joe. This fool said, yet though he slay me. My redeemer. Yes, well, I trust him. Come yes, on. Yes, well, I trust him. No, mm -hmm. you speak as a foolish woman. <laughs> so we receive good by the Just Lord. Curse God and Lord. die, bro. Come on. Listen, I think we got this all backwards. I think this idea of being very smart has not worked out for us. The idea of being very heart always will. They gonna catch it later. They're gonna catch you later. I'm 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 I gotta rush to my closing thoughts. They're gonna they're gonna catch you later though. You know, you, you you get what I'm saying, Grace. They're gonna catch you later. What's been the point of this message? Let's go back to Exodus 14. These people got blessed and decided to live in what makes them happy instead of dying for the abundance that would change their life. That's been the point of this whole lesson. I, I, need, I need you to hear me very well. They were willing. There's no way you go back to slavery and keep your goal. They were willing to live in poverty than to face the unfamiliarity of creating abundance. And that I don't understand. Hear me. I'm going to be very transparent. In the Quran and in the Torah and in the Bible, there are a few things that scare me. I will use the Torah and the Bible since most of this crowd is from a Christian background. King Saul absolutely terrifies me. And the Torah, Ina, King Saul is chosen by God. We often mess this up, Dr. Ferris, in the text. We often say, well, you know, the people chose Saul and God chose David, but the text chose Saul. The people chose a king. Fine, I'll give you a king. Samuel, when you look out, there'll be one standing well. The oil will anoint him. It's in the text. You don't have to agree with me. The peop people chose to have a king. We didn't king like everybody else around us. But God chose that king. This is what scares me. Then a spirit comes in the song. And Saul is no longer anointed and then fired from his position, but excuse me, fired from his title, but kept in his position. Y'all not listening. 25, 22-ish years. Because if you talk, if you think about the, the, the gathering of the South and then the North, 22-ish years. 
Ain't it? This man is fired. But kept in his position. And Susan, if I t- fired. if I tell you that that scares me, because I, I know, and I know, Grace, as Baptist, can't lose your salvation. But Dr. Ferris, I'm scared to write a paper about this because that so looked like losing your salvation. I like, I'm so like this genuinely not bothers me. I said, be transparent. I have no answer here. That looks like God chose him and then took his spirit from him. What was Saul's greatest flaw? I'll tell you, being ambitious. What is Antonio? The most ambitious person you ever gonna know. And so I sit here and I look at Saul And I look at God's reaction to Saul and it scares me. There's another text far earlier than that, Jerome. Yeah, Saul's Saul's heart was divided is what Dr. Ferris said. So is Antonio's. (laughs) You know how many times God has had... Go ahead. Do do, do the divide for me because I was going to ask, what's wrong with being ambitious? Because to make it make sense to me, his motives were far incorrect. Everything I could I could simplify it to you by his motives. His motives have nothing to do with glorifying or honoring or, or having the theocracy. His, his motives were his motives. Like so, so the grace according to your belief, the devil never gonna make it in, but the devil has confessed. A personal, the devil has confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? You got to get that in the Old Testament. The, the, uh, we know who you are. Uh, you, 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 the, you, the Messiah. You know, uh, no, it doesn't say Messiah. It says uh, anointed one. No, it doesn't say anointed one. It says most high. That's what it says. You, the most high. You're the most high. So even the devil's, devil's demons, legions know most high. The devil has a person. I mean, I don't know how you get more in personal relationship with God than floating up to heaven and saying, hey, tell me about this dude, Job. I don't know how you get more personal than that. I mean, that seems pretty personal to me, Dr. Ferris. I ain't never floated up to heaven and said, let me talk bad about somebody and hurt somebody. So the devil has a personal relationship with God and, and knows that Jesus is the most high. But according to your faith, Grace, the devil's never going to make it in because the devil don't have the motives. Saul scares me because of motives. Because you can know all these words. You can teach all these teachings. But if your heart is not aligned with God's, you better be nervous. There's somebody else that scares me. We call him Joseph. Well, you call him Joseph. His Hebrew name, his name, and Jesus' name is the same name of the Old Testament. Here's the problem with here's the problem with this, Grace. Now, you're right, I'm, I'm talking. So, Dr. Ferris is my um, doctor professor, y'all. So he about to learn this terrible secret about me. I absolutely would have slept with Potiphar's wife. Joseph was absolutely single. Nah, now. Nah. Antonio, Antonio, Antonio. Most of us would have. So thank you, you so much. Thank you. You, so you much. can go tell. You can go thank tell the so truth. Much. Thank you so much. Because for one, if I wouldn't have slept with Potiphar's wife, Susan, I'd have been Potiphar. The damn story would have been about me. It ain't about me. The, first off, the, the, the Holy Spirit went out its way to say, this is a beautiful woman. Mm. But that's not why I would have slept with Potiphar's wife. Listen to what Joseph said. I can't mm. do it. My master put me in charge of all this. Mm. I'm, t- I'm trying to tell y'all about my wickedness. All this. All this is, look, I can't do that. And she said, you're going to do it or you're going to lose it. And right there, I would have went back, Susan, where I was homeless in slavery for a long time. See, I don't want to keep it real. I got no problem accounting for my wickedness. 
I would have went back and went, now nah, my brother sold me into slavery. And I would to intellectually, Dr. Ferris came up with all the reasons why. And I would I, I Dion, I would even, I would even use the Bible when I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail. I'm to, I, like I literally would have twisted scriptures. Ain't nobody gonna know. I just, you know, I'm saying it's just, you know, I'm just, you know, uh God forgive me. Not for her. To keep my prosperity. Which leads us to my final thoughts. But Antonio T. I'm not gonna you, go ahead. You gotta remember. Go ahead. You gotta remember. <clears throat> Joseph was not of the regular. Ooh. Not only was he the baby, he was one of the special babies. He had visions. He had dreams. He had higher hopes than he Potiphar's was, wife. He was because he already, it was already set in him that yeah. he was going to even have more than what he was in charge of. He was going to own it. So that kind of brings a whole different light into what his thought process was. So I'm just lucky just saying. I'm just You're saying. Actually right. You're actually, let me raise the stakes a little bit for y'all. Yeah, Benjamin was the baby later on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me raise the stakes for y'all. Joseph was single. Okay, that didn't raise stakes enough. I'm and he had a penis. It, it, and he had a penis that's 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 pretty raised in itself in more than one way hold, hold on real quick watch this here raise the stakes and joseph could have got away with it see this is what y'all don't want to account for wow this lady said hey we good <laughs> we good i'm not telling nobody he could have got away with it and if you stack all that against me, Dion, single, can get away with it. I mean, but y'all saved. Y'all don't. Y'all don't account for your wickedness. That's why you're wicked. Jordan Peterson says, "A good man, a strong man, is a man who accounts for his wickedness and has an involuntary control." Since y'all so saved. That's why you get in your feelings and black out and cuss people out. Go ahead, Prophet Jerry. <laughs> Go ahead. You you you, you kind of answered my question <laughs> because I'm like, if he would have did it, well, she still would have told on him. Because I mean, that's what it was that, that was going to be my is, question. I have no choice but to believe that text because I don't want to put anything in that text. Right, right, right. We're not supposed to have says. That text clearly says she was beautiful and she was going to keep that thing a secret. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree. I'm the I worst. In fact, but the secret, how long is that secret going to be lasting? Though? I mean, that secret is going to come out somewhere or another. That's 100% facts. Watch this here because it was in the dark. Come to the light. I'm trying to tell you all my wickedness. And I would have, take what he just said. It's going to come out some, And this is what I would have said, Susan. I'll do it when it, when it comes. Like, literally, I am that wicked. Uh -huh. See, y'all don't want to. Mm -hmm. Tanya, it's just, it's, it's just me and you. The rest of them. It's they oh, they, mm -hmm. they levitated to this Zoom call today. You know, they, they just floated. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about I could have got away with it to protect me not being homeless again. I'm not talking about my loins. I'm talking about not starving to death. Okay. I'm going to be a double, double, double advocate like you. You should. We have a, we have a discussion. Yes. I'm being a devil's advocate like you. Now, okay. what if he did, but then end up got her pregnant? With the middle Bible, <laughs> that's the answer is because literally, yeah. the closest thing you can get to Jesus, I ain't messing with you, Bishop. But the closest thing you can ever get to Jesus Christ in the Old Testament would be Joseph, he's okay. the most forgiveness 
And what did you mean for devil? What devil meant for evil, right? All I say forgives his brother. He has the same name as Jesus in Hebrew. The one who saves, he saves the whole known world. That's typology. That's that's a left to right. It's a. I'm gonna explain it. I don't mean to confuse somebody, but it's a left to right reading of the text, which is very conservative. That that tent. And tent means this, that's allegory, that's 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 dicey, that's dicey, but it has its place. Here's why I did this call today, because tomorrow's call is going to be about all all the money and y'all salaries and blah blah blah. I need you to get from wherever you are that compromise is in my spirit. And every time I try not to compromise, Jerome, I do it. Every day I get up, Dr. Ferris, I have to tell myself, don't compromise. This is, I know y'all ain't never compromised, but my flesh, I got to die to my flesh daily, every day not to take the path of least resistance. Every day I have to tell myself, do not let your anointing invalidate the people who need to, who you need to listen to. You know how smart I am? The pro- you know what you know, you know the problem with smart people? They know everything. So you go, you go, oh, you know what I think? Oh, I already know that already. You know how much y'all say, you know how many times y'all interrupted me today and I let it happen? Do you understand how much learned behaviors I have to have to do that? There's every single gift that I have is so easy to operate on the shadow side. I tell people, I'm not a good person, Jerome. I'm a, I've practiced so much to his virtue. You're a heathen. I'm You're still a heathen. I'm an anointed heathen for sure. There's no doubt about it. And that and look, that don't mean I'm saved because King Cyrus was anointed like 500 years or 52 years, whatever it was, in Isaiah. Isaiah's name Cyrus by name. He, that's going to free God's people. And he's not even born yet. And, and he's not even like, that's just look it up. Listen, just look it up. It's in the text. Just look it up. We got eight minutes left. Listen to me. Time has been well spent. Antonio, what are you trying to communicate to us? That we compromise instead of dying for abundance. See, we got to die, Tanya. But what we do is we choose to die and compromise. Dr. Ferris asks, is Ambition rooted in pride, maybe that's the concern. Or is there a good kind of ambition? There definitely is a good kind of ambition. I do not have the answer for that. If I do the good kind of ambition, it is by virtue and not by intellect. Let me just tell you, (laughs) it's not. (laughs) If you say, Antonio, how are you so ambitious and good? I cannot answer that question for you. It is, it is, it's virtue at this point. It's not intellect. It's just, I'm, I'm borrowing from, that's a, that's a thought from Aristotle. Aristotle said, Aristotle who rejected pretty much every one of Plato's teachings. Aristotle said, you do something so much, it becomes nature, but he didn't say nature. He said a virtue. And the whole point is to get to these three virtues, but I'll spare you that philosophical thing. And I, the greatest philosophy, literally Dr. Ferris teaches philosophy. So I'll stay out of that. I'll stay out of that. Grace, I got six minutes to try to convince you to stop compromising. But the problem with that, Dion, is every time we get triggered, that's what we do. Yeah, y'all acting like y'all, y'all acting like you actually control your emotions. You say if you want to know if you want if you really want to know who you are, I, I use I use 
I use Susan, right? Susan is the most saintiest. Dr. Ferris got a whole doctor's degree in theology or whatever it is. And he ain't most saintier than Susan. Susan ain't cussed in her whole life. You understand? That Susan got an automatic, between Susan and Grace's grandmother who sleeps with her ancestors, they getting in heaven automatically. Ain't nobody more saintier than Susan, okay? Right behind that will be Sandra and I, because, you know, she's a new creature. She's a new creature, you understand? She's a new creature, you understand? Susan, one billion percent is the most saved person here. But if you want to know who Susan really is, Dr. Ferris, walk up to her and slap her. See, you missed it. All in practice behaviors are going to go out the window. Because whoever the hell she really is, and that surprise slap, she going to show it. And she may go, pow. Oh, okay, I forgive you. She may. She may. Do we got some, I'm not going to forgive you folk in any in, in squares. And we got some, if you slap me, I wish you would slap me. Where, where, where's the confrontation of folk? I wish a blankety blank would. Where, where y'all I at? Wish you, I wish you would. <laughs> Stop we, ready. So Let's all do. these folk, all these folk need grace, Phil. They are they actually need grace morning by morning. I got I got four minutes left, Grace, to tell you this here. Listen. Who you really are is affecting your abundance. And I know you think who you really are is your representative. That's how I really if I promise you, if you go back to the beginning of this call, I have gone full circle now. I know, I, Ina, I know who you think you really are is that reputation of you being nice, but if I slap you, and I don't mean like, I mean like a, like a, no, 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 what's a, no, I, it's gotta be loud. One of them slaps that knock the taste out your mouth is what my Uncle John would say. You know what I'm talking about? First off, a man shouldn't be slapping another man. They, they, they shot people over that in the dark ages. Like if you, if you, if you, or stab somebody, like if you took off your glove and slapped somebody, there was a duel after that. You, y'all, y'all don't understand. They, like they literally, they, it was, a, it was a duel. It was a, it was like, you don't slap somebody. When you, so one of us, we, if you slap me, we're in agreement. One of us must die now. This is how cold a slap is. <laughs> this is, this is world history. That's going to bring the real you out. He said, oh, well, ain't nobody going to slap me. Okay, then. I know many of Christians, Dion, that's Christians until they get behind that steering wheel. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> they Christian till they get behind that steering wheel, Grace. What are you insinuating, Antonio? I'm saying you will never cuss until you get behind that steering wheel. You don't go, he cut me off. His wife must be pregnant. Oh my God, I hope him. No, that's what you do. You understand what you do. You know what you do. You know what you do. In 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 final words, in, well, here's your homework. Your homework is for the rest of this week until we meet again, do not be the people complaining with abundance. And I know you think you don't have abundance, but if you got anything more than what you were born with, you have abundance. Anything you have, you if you have anything, you're in the plus. You are currently these, these adults in Exodus 14. You've been through hell and back. You've seen every last one of you, if you believe in a monotheistic God, you 100% have seen the goodness of God in your life. And you woke up this morning complaining and last year complaining and last week complaining and you were triggered and you were sad and everything about it. You complain. You, you, you are literally the people in Exodus 14. And come tomorrow, You're going to live in it. What's to live in it, Grace? You're going to live in your complaints, live in your slavery, or you're going to die for it. I don't know. I'm ending. I don't know 
your heart. Tanya, all I can tell you is you going to get your harvest. You will be audited one way or the other. Now, we can rush in and text and say, well, the enemies that you see today, you never see before. And God wiped them out. But they didn't. They 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 I can't guarantee you God going to wipe out your enemies in your lifetime. What I can guarantee you in conclusion is you're going to live in it or you're going to die for it. As for me and my house, come on, Joanna. <laughs> my goal is to die empty. I worked way too hard to only be able to say I worked way too hard. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can't plant better. You can dominate. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. This whole class was Grace's fault. It was her. If you didn't like it, blame Grace. There you go. <laughs> All right, <y> <laughs> Dr. Fair, yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit, <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> You're modest. All right, John, love you, everybody. Love, love you more. more. Love you more. Yeah, have love a good day.